Hey, get in here. Dallas is about to start. Welcome to the Ewing Barbecue Podcast. Uh, it's a special DOA edition, and we've been trying to put this together for a long time. Back when, before there was even a podcast, which we're now in our fifth year and over 130 episodes. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. Poor Mary. Poor Mary. Well, I think that was the exciting thing for me is that I came in at the time when Dallas exploded, you know, because of the Who yes. Shot JR. And I remember yes. Mary Crosby coming, who I got to know outside of, because I played at the golf and the Crosby tournament many years. We get to be in friends. But, you know, little did I know what I was walking into, you know, at that time. Um, so and it was she, she was, exciting to she be was at the show. reunion in 2008. So, Denon, you saw Mary at Yes, I did. It was so good to see her. She's that lovely. was so much lovely. fun. I don't know yeah. where you guys were. That was such yeah. a great event. <laughs> I don't think anybody told me about it. I'm sure they tried to I, chase you down. I had just seen you three weeks before at the fan source with Linda Gray's dinner. Yeah, I was there. Why didn't you, anybody tell me about this reunion? We That's how we really got connected, I remember, from that fan, fan source dinner, Josh. Right, and I remember at the barbecue handing your email address to Denon uh, very mm-hmm. quickly yes, in, yes. in passing. And then it was like, yeah. she's like all right, what do I do I with know. this? Because I just assumed you would be there, and I was surprised you weren't. I, I wish someone had told me about it. I, I would have. I, I the same. I would have come out. You know, we didn't know. But, so, well, now we're going to all be now. together. Now we're I'm all so excited together now. So this, I know. Quite, this is going to be quite the lineup they have uh, there. They have um, Patrick, Linda, Steve, Charlene, Priscilla Presley, Lee McCluskey. Uh, Christopher Atkins, Omri Katz, <laughs> yeah. Josh Harris, Josh Henderson, who played um, uh, John Ross on the new show. Right. Lee Taylor Young, who played Kimberly Kreider. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Jack Scalia, who played uh, Nick Pierce. Jack Scalia, lovely. Mm-hmm. Jenna yeah, Lee Harrison yes. is coming. Nice on the eyes, that Jack Scalia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sure was. <laughs> I can't wait to see him now, but he was. Uh, Jenna Lee Harrison. He was. Yeah. Um, Tracy Scoggins is going to be there. She was in JR Returns yes. uh, with you, sure. Deb. Yeah. Um, Rosalind Allen, who was also in JR Returns, she oh played she played uh, Julia Cunningham, who Bobby was involved with and stuff. Um, Audrey Landers cannot make it, unfortunately. She has a mm-hmm. another event going on. But pull up the list. I know well, it's wonderful. The latest post, and I think it was I, I must have seen twenty five people. One twenty five photos. I don't know yeah. how they're it's fitting so all the sick. photos on. I don't know <laughs> if they're going to be able to even do a large cast photo at the because uh, they would have people come up and do the. Remember at South Fork, you did the cast photo with the people and they would come up. Oh yeah, right. I, I don't know. Yeah. going to be like I just I, I guess it, it's just like one huge space, so they're going to just like yeah. put us in like a section, yeah. right? We're not going to have our own room. I because haven't been there before. There are rooms. From last year, I don't remember. No, I think it's just one big space, and then they'll section us off. Yeah, right. So, that's what um, I was visualizing. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Do you so, remember talking about big group photos? Do you remember that one? I I know it's in a box, um, uh-huh. but uh, it was it was probably like the last. It must. I don't know if it was a Christmas party right before you know yep. toward the end of the series or whether it was. But it was at the pool. That one. You no, know, on the yes. Oh, oh my! No, I'm trying to. Is that at the uh, pool? Is that outdoors? You know, it is. Wow. It is. Yeah, because it's, uh, they did a it's Christmas. Above. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh yep. my goodness! And, uh, yeah. Larry's not yep. dressed like Santa Claus, is he? No, no, he looks great in his suit, and uh, everyone's in cast him. He... But it's cast and crew and everybody. Yeah. Oh, so I, I should maybe. Have, I'll, I'll take. Some, I'll get some. Uh, I'm. I'm getting I all have, the photos I done. No, I just I'll, love to have one. Thank you. I'll take some copies out of my. Of my uh, treasure mm-hmm. box. <laughs> what a ride. It really <laughs> was. And we were known to be just the sharpest television show. You know, we were, yeah. it was always on time. Everybody. We never like went into overtime. Like everybody nope, always knew their stuff, did their thing. But don't uh, you remember, like in all the 10 years that I was there anyway, there wasn't one serious rehearsal. Like we would rehearse. No, I know. Yeah. 
and then uh, finally Leonard would say, okay, let's just shoot this thing. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, that's what we said. The comedy, they could have done a Dallas I know. comedy. Oh, yeah, Because totally. they did their lines in comedy every they're time. Always, Larry and Patrick are always pulling pranks on each other. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's, fu it's funny that you mentioned comedy because they were going to do a movie and John Travolta was going to play JR and all this stuff. And oh, I, God. they abandoned it, but I have a copy of the script. Oh, Seriously? Wow. Oh, wow. And Ooh. You could do it and slap the title National Lampoon's Dallas. On Dallas. It. Yeah. Totally. Totally. I mean, was... the outtake reel, if you, you, the, the outtake reel is out there. The blooper reel, the outtake reel is just a, a little sliced, a tiny bit of the silliness. You remember how when Larry and Patrick would come and the elevator would open and they would be on their knees? Oh, yes. The elevator would go halfway <laughs> every single yeah. time. It looked like the elevator hadn't made it up and they were, and then they'd make little, 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 cute little giggle. faces with each other. And come in. They were just Peck's bad boys. They had so much fun they were, together. They were they, hilarious. And they were like two brothers. Needed, yeah, it yeah, made it an easy set to work on because, yeah. you know, and when people came on, I think most people were, you know, if you were coming in, it could be intimidating to come on to a series right, that, right. that long. Was that iconic? And we all did our best to make them comfortable. But the minute they kind of understood, yeah. <laughs> you know, that it was a safe place, uh, yeah. you know, things went really well. But the guys never wanted to work over. Nobody ever wanted to work over time. That's why we were on time. You know? <laughs> I know. I and, know. Well, well, you can't blame him. Larry wanted to get back to his Malibu castle, you know, his Malibu beautiful <laughs> yeah, home he had. Right? Tight and we're yeah. yeah. lucky. We never had to I go. remember his hats every time we'd go in and he's getting his hair done or something. And uh, he'd always, or his makeup done, he'd always have on some crazy hat. And oh mm -hmm. my gosh. And it, he used to do those parades memories. on the beach in Malibu, right? Yes. And, and I know, because yeah. I, I talked about him. Five, five months before he passed, I was at a dinner with him and we sat at the same table and we talked about how he used to do acid with Keith Moon from the Oh, Hulu. my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was, on the, he was on some show with um, called uh, The Good Life with Donna Mills, who played Abby on Knott's Landing, uh -huh. and oh, David funny. Wayne, who played Digger Barnes. Right. So oh, it was wow. Just, uh, yeah. In fact, it was because of that show that he got David Wayne the part as Digger Barnes on Dallas. Oh, yeah. okay. But that makes um, sense. I don't know, we didn't get to you on how you ended yes. up uh, on the show. Well, I just I just had an interview. And so I had a commercial that day all the way in Warner Brothers. And this interview with Dallas was at MGM. So at Bath, that's what they called it then. Now it's studio, uh, Sony, Sony Studios. Yeah. But I, you know, I kind of begged my way up in front of 250 girls, I just kept saying, please, can I go in front of you? I've got to go. I've got, you know, and, and everybody was gracious and let me in. So when I went in to meet Larry I, or Leonard, I mean, I was just so full of energy and hi, my name's Denon. I'm on Dallas and I've got a commercial I got to get to Warner Brothers for. And I'm so sorry. I, you know, as a Dallas cowboy, I, I was just really promoting myself. And uh, I got home that night from the, um, commercial and there, you know, the old fashioned recording, you know, uh, phones we used to have. And uh, it said that, for you know, I had to show there, up the next called, morning. That's called an answering machine for people. An answering for machine. It was an answering machine. Like <laughs> you push buttons. For her to and uh, I, re I remember my first day in the office, there was this machine, which there's a picture of it in one of the photos someone sent me. And I was laughing. I was like, we didn't know what it was. We were all looking at it going, what does it do? And poking buttons. And it was a fax machine. And uh, now I know what it is. But we, well, we did not know. We had, we had computers, Texas Instrument computers. I they know. In. They didn't, there was like the screen didn't come on, but they were huge. Remember with yeah. the big modems and, you know, and we type yeah. away on them like we were working on these newfangled computers. Yeah. But that's right. I remember fax machines came out and during Dallas machines. and everybody was like, let me fax you. I'll fax you. Are you going to fax me? I'll fax me that. Just like the text. Oh, yeah. just, all the just, know. just the fax, ma'am. No. Yeah, Finally, because and they used to drive out our scripts every night to each yes, of our homes. Yes. Remember? Yes. And deliver them. Deliver them to us. Or the our night before. Or whatever. Right. Now, I mean, it's in, it was... now it's encrypted emails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finally, we got emails, to that, right? but yeah, I, yeah. I, I, and, and, and in those days, 
in those days, actors, when we had an audition, we had to drive all the way out to like Burbank Studios or wherever the audition was and get the material and go home and go all the way out right. again. Yeah. That's why fax machines were revolutionary for right. actors. Yes. Like we could get our material right in our own home. We didn't have to drive mm-hmm. an hour and back to get our audition material. It was huge. Right. So do you do you all remember your first day on set? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, I remember Larry uh, sat me down when I was getting my makeup and my hair done, and he sat down and, or next to me, and he said, okay, I'm going to tell you the rules. Don't ever ask for a raise, and don't ever uh, – you remember yep. that? And no, you'll be around course. the whole time. And um, yeah, and they'll never fire you. It was so funny. I, I just remember thinking about that. Like, okay, no mm-hmm. problem. Well, <laughs> I was as, happy as, to be there like you were. Well, as usual, mm-hmm. which we'll talk, we can talk about more because I know we both love love our, our hair and makeup stories before we got on set. But my first oh, yeah. day, here I am, you know, it, Barely, I mean, like not a month in LA, right? And I'm driving to the studio and it is a thick, thick fog. You know, it's that morning, you know, fog. And I'm sitting at a light. I can hardly see to even drive to the studio. And then all of a sudden I'm at a light and the light starts to sway. Uh-oh. And my car starts oh. to sway. Oh, and no. I, went, I think, I think this is an earthquake. Oh, wow. <laughs> it didn't last very long, but my car swayed, the lights swayed, and then it stopped. And then I creeped along trying to find it. I was the first one in hair and makeup. Greg Mitchell was there. First one in hair and makeup. Had long hair. And you see what they did to my hair. They took all my long hair and put it in oh, some yeah. old lady bun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a side view. But it was I. It was Luella and me and, and our desks. And then Larry walked in. It, I didn't have a lot of big introduction it was kind of sit in this chair and set the lights and everything and you know so it was it was sort of I felt it wasn't like you get a I got a big welcome it wasn't bad it was just I was there before you know the crack of dawn uh first one in the, in the yes. and hair chair which we often were yep four o'clock in the morning Love it. <laughs> well here and here's the thing Josh this is so funny they loved to bring us in early get us all you know, makeup on and hair and these big rollers and then break for lunch. <laughs> I break for lunch. I know, I know. We oh, always went to lunch. Our hair and these big rolls. Yep. So how, how many times did you go down to the cafeteria with that stuff in your hair? Oh, oh it was oh, hilarious. Always. So we had oh, to eat together, even if we didn't like each other, because we would have felt too stupid to sit there with rollers oh, yeah. by ourselves. Oh, right? I mean, the good yeah. news is we did. But we, we, did, but, we, we did. but we did. We were, we all, and we knew it. We knew that we would get all set, camera ready, except for taking our hair out of the rolls because we all had yes. lots of hair. Lots of hair. hair. So you got your little shortcut. That's and, right. Uh, and big you know, hair. Because and big Dallas hair. <laughs> right. Yes, it was. Lots of hair and lots of shoulders. Yeah, yeah, a lot of shoulders too. But yeah, we and and, and uh, if 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 we were in the middle of shooting, we already were dressed and ready to go. Sometimes we'd go across the street. Do you remember? Because the, the oh the, yes. Yeah. I still the remember the scallops uh, Laguini. It was so good. And uh, <laughs> oh, I also remember uh, Captain Hook being filmed at MGM and uh, that big ship when they were building it. And yeah. we watched it being built and or carved or whatever they did to it. And uh, then we went to the commissary one day and we're all in curlers and looking at silly. And there's all these aliens and crazy oh, yeah. creatures. Remember? It was so funny. Yeah. That was what a good day. Filming? Um, Captain Hook with uh, Robin Williams. Oh, they were doing Hook, yeah. and then also um, Little House in the Prairie used the lot once in a while. So you'd have all these prairie folk walking around in their eighteen, <laughs> and then you'd have then you had Fame that was recording there. So it was oh, lots, yes. of, lots of leggings and leg warmers, and you know, yeah. lots of tandex and hair That's up and cool. whatever. It was, it, I mean, it was an old fashioned. It felt like the best, the closest to an old fashioned, you know, like movie at last. I mean, I remember yeah. walking on and my audition. It had that history. It was the old MGM lot. Like it was a great my audition. Lot. They said, "Okay, well, you're gonna go, you're gonna go to the you're gonna go. I think it was the Gable Building, but you're gonna go right. walk down exactly. Garland Gable. Street to the Gable right. Building." Gable I'm Garland like, I'm the theater yeah. first, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, it's all MGM!" I turn the corner, and who walks in front of me? My audition day, Sylvester Stallone. 
Oh my oh, god. Lucky. <laughs> Deb, you you were on uh, an episode of Three's Company, and that's how you met John Ritter and became yeah. good friends. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. I will have some pictures at the show, actually, a um, couple of them from that. I, I can't say enough about how much I loved him and how wonderful he was. We had such a great time doing that episode together. And, I, you know, I continued to run into him over the years. Um, and he was actually very instrumental in my getting an audition for another show he did. Um, it was called Hooper. Do you remember that? Who was it? Yeah, Hooper Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember, I remember that. And I auditioned. I remember. It came down, it came down between me and another person. He really worked with me. But both of our brothers had cerebral palsy, so we kind of made a really we, – we connected mm. because of that, I think. Mm -hmm. And then he was and just I, adorable. He was just wonderful to work with. He was fantastic. So. And I, I remember a movie that he was in that nobody else remembers if I bring it up. It was called Hero at Large. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, I, I used I to see him once, yeah. yeah. I worked now, on that is there, show a lot. Is there anyone that you wish you had more scenes with in the show? Um, the yeah. Bobby. I was in love with Bobby. He's so I handsome. And he was so thoughtful and sweet. He was yeah. such a, he was an amazing man. He still is. He's an amazing man. I can't wait to see him, but he was just, he was really handsome. And oh, his photo, that, Deb. Yeah. There was that one with him, uh, the one scene with him, as a matter of fact, I saw it recently out at the pool and that man had pecs. I mean, oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Oh, he was, he was, gorgeous. Uh, he was gorgeous. Yeah. And I always, and I always love the way he, he talked about his wife so fondly. He was just a good guy. Love he was, his wife. He was a, yeah. He was a good guy. So no, he did. Yes. You know, with yes, the he did. Hands, and I was at a, I don't know where, I was at like a swap meet or something. And I found a picture of him with his hand around a tree, you know, very serious. So of course I took it to the set and he's like, thanks. Thanks for the memory of that. <laughs> it's, it's funny because. I wish Larry's I had more scenes. I wish I had more scenes to do with Bobby because they were very cautious as to how involved we could be outside of the office, even as friends. Um, and that always kind of disappointed me. We had a couple of scenes, you know, where I went and had a drink at, you know, the oil you, barons or whatever. With him. But you, you, you went in that scene where they were dissolving you in oil and uh, you, you, you cried at the table. I was watching that the other night. And, uh, yeah. But I mean, I just loved, I'm, I'm the same thing. I, I mean, I loved working with, with all of them, but we did, we got the opportunity to work with, but there are other no. cast members. I and then I got to work with Victoria when Patrick was getting cleaned in the shower for a year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. and that yes, was kind yes. of a nice thing for me because I actually got to do more, you know, and be really involved with the business in in a way. But um, and I, mean, gonna, I, miss, I miss the heck out of him for that the time he was I'm on. But. Trying to pull up a clip here because you mentioned you mentioned this uh, scene and you can talk about it working with this individual. Excuse me. Why aren't the phones being answered? I'm sorry, Bobby. It's, uh, it's my fault. Oh, Mama, when'd you get back? Uh, this morning. I hope you don't mind. I wanted to check for Ewing Records. And Clayton's at the library. We're trying to find the name of the town where Jock hit his first gusher. Not much luck with that con artist back east. You mean Father Mallory? Actually, he was quite helpful and very nice. But did he know what the key opened? A safe deposit box, which led to this. Well, it's turning into quite a scavenger hunt, isn't it? Well, Valerie Sr. had a rather uh, unusual sense of humor. This key opened something in your daddy's past. Miss Ellie thought it might have something to do with the town where Jock hit his first gusher. But the records only go back to 1945, and we can't find the name of the town. I don't suppose either of you'd remember it. Well, I'm sorry, Mama. I don't. Say, why don't you call Punk Anderson or uh, or Jordan Lee? They might remember something. What a good idea. Thank you, Jr. And why don't I take you to lunch, kind of take the edge off this disappointment? Lovely. Bobby, will you join us? No, thank you, Mama. I've got a lot of work I have to catch up on. And uh, maybe these files will be done by the time we get back. Sure. Ewing Oil. Oh, you know, when you said who would you have liked to have worked yeah. with, she's the one yeah. that came for me because I only got to work with her a couple of times, but she was mm -hmm. such a lovely human being. And I, and I remember when I first, uh, 
started on the show, you talked about our first day. I remember I was very nervous being there because I was such a young actor and I had done yeah. so little in television. And, and she just made me feel so comfortable. Mm. I remember that about her. And, um, and I found recently, and this is, I can't believe it. She sent me flowers on my birthday. I found a- Me girl. too. She, she, yeah. Yeah. Do you, when, yeah. do you, when, do you know when she sent us flowers as well? After yeah. we did that scene with her. After that scene? Oh my she God. She came back to our dressing rooms and there was a card from her saying, I'm so glad basically, that you, and I have it. Yeah. Together. And it's yep, unfortunately not in this apartment. It's my mom has it in her apartment. Aww. But um, thanking us, thanking yeah. us, you know, and so excited that she got to work with all of us. We all had a bouquet of flowers in our dressing room. That's oh my the first God. I, I, I hate to admit it, I still have them. They're dried roses and they look great. And they're, I still have them. Uh -huh. God, oh, I know, I remember that. It was so sweet. No, no, they're just, just still in the little basket with the oh, little wow. card sticking in. So no. There, there were obviously a lot of people that went through. Uh, you talked about uh, Barbara. Uh, Deb, when you were on after JR got shot, you obviously probably, did you get to have any scenes with Jim Davis at all? You're talking about Deborah Trinelli? Yeah, Deb, Deb Trinelli. I never had a scene. I never got to have a scene. I did get to meet him. Um, you know, he was very, very ill by the time. Mm. Um, I was on the show. I mean, and, and, but he did have a scene and he was there one day. Um, and I did get to meet him. He was with Barbara, but I never got, I never got to work with him, unfortunately. But I'll talk about a big strapping cowboy of, I mean, he just was <laughs> like, that was so great. And I mean, I, I always think of sort of Steve Canale kind of being sort of the, very much like Jack, you know, sort of just that outdoorsy, you know, great, great, solid guy, solid character. Cowboy. Yeah. Cowboy, cowboy, yeah. exactly. True cowboy. Yeah. And, cowboy is cowboy. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I know. And we, we did obviously get to get you outside the office uh, a lot more than people realize. I mean, we're not chained to our desks. <laughs> right. You, you're, you're not chained to your desks, no. See if I can. I can't wait. This is so much fun. Actually, I'm a little worried. You know about the South Fork wedding jinx. Lucy. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. There is a surefire method to beat the jinx. I can't wait to hear this. Uh, I'm not sure I want to. <laughs> you just have to follow three simple wedding rules. First, keep everyone away from the pool. Otherwise, someone will end up in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. And second, lock the bedroom doors. And y'all know what I mean. Lucy, put an end to this, please. And most importantly, find anyone with the initials JR and chain them up in the closet. Keep them there until after the ceremony. After that, you can live happily ever after. Oh, I remember that was so much fun. Oh, it was. Mm -hmm. It was always fun when we got to, you know, have legs and, you know, so to Get speak. out of the office. Yeah. Oh, we well, went to a couple and of the, formal... the living room was right behind the office, technically right, in right. the set. Right. So we always watched the living room scenes. And so yeah. we literally just went from one little behind the door, kind right. of or behind the wall. <laughs> I remember, though, yeah. I was so impressed by the sets once I actually got to South Fork for the first mm -hmm. time. And saw so how accurate, you know, the, the living room and the kitchen and... I mean, and the pool, you know, I mean, there were, there were people who really thought we were always at the pool, you know, and that was a soundstage. I can't remember the number of the soundstage, 20 something, I think, but. It, it um, was, it's easy to tell when you were on a soundstage and uh, we've picked it up in the podcast is when you're on location, they show the cars driving up the driveway, mm. but when mm. you're on the soundstage, you just see them entering the shot, like they're just being pushed onto the, uh. <laughs> onto the onto the soundstage, so you don't see them driving in the driveway, and uh, oh, yeah. right. and some of those backdrops you can tell they can, the yeah. lighting sometimes they get matted and yeah. stuff, but uh, yeah, but the, the pool um, was still pretty cool. It was a it was a pretty pool. amazing that pool. It was a full size pool. It was a full size pool. pool. Yeah, yeah. Mary Crosby knows really that pool quite well, it. doesn't she? That's right. <laughs> Talk about each of your favorite storylines, and then maybe a best storyline or performance that you thought the other one of like 
been on you for Deb and Deb and Deb and oh, just your favorite scenes from yourselves and for each other. That's it. Yeah. Well, I remember just live being sassy. And once you cut your hair, it's just, it was such a sophisticated look for you. And, uh, you know, just the way JR would come through so fast and you were always able to follow him into his office. <laughs> Not all of us got to do that, you know, and, and uh, I, I kind of have more memories offset, oddly enough, just behind the scenes playing trivia. And uh, Deborah Trinelli was like amazing. She knew everything. I always felt so stupid. I just didn't know all of these answers and you knew them all. So you always won. And so that was really fun watching that. And then of course the girls uh, rehearsing, Deborah Renard rehearsing for Guinevere in, um, uh, what was it, Lancelot? Uh, Camelot, yeah. Camelot, I remember Camelot. remember that, Danone. I oh, can't yeah. believe you remember oh, that. Well, it was so beautiful. You can't not remember her because the two, two of them sing like beyond beautiful and stage production singing. It, it's a different, deep, solid sound that you, you don't hear from a lot of singers, you know, and, and I have goosebumps right now thinking about Wait. it because I would walk by their trailers and just go, oh my gosh. And I would just listen, you know, we just Do sit you know that Howard Teal came to see me in that production. I have a photo with him. And he went to you. And he sang too. Pamela, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. And I didn't know too. Howard Teal he only got to sing once on the show, and it was in a uh, hotel scene with uh, Barbara Bel uh, He came out of the bathroom singing like Camelot or something like that. No, Howard Keel. Howard. Oh, Howard Keel. Oh, did. I don't think oh, you were in a hotel. Oh, yeah. He was in. Uh, <laughs> was he in Oklahoma or am I? He was in, he in Oklahoma. He did. He and that was one of my favorite treats. And I know I'm getting off subject of your question was when Donna Reed was on our show and Howard and Donna would talk about the MGM days oh. and just tell stories. And, you know, but Howard's voice, I have to say, talk about a crush on somebody. Yeah. Howard would walk in and, and it was always, you know, I'd say, Howard, just say good morning. And he'd lean in and go, good morning, Deborah. How are you? With that deep. <laughs> because I knew his music and he and Judy came to see I did a lot of cabaret work at the time they came and if they couldn't come they always sent me a note um so that was always That's the thing the I remember about Denon is that first of all she was from the moment she was on every I mean she didn't have a bad angle she is oh, so gorgeous and she glowed you know I mean you just were so stunningly gorgeous and sweet and funny and wonderful and kind and you made us coats oh you remember making oh, yes. these wonderful leather bedazzled coats for us they were flannel oh, oh yeah oh, oh yeah <laughs> i had that until i moved to, to new york no, I oh had really oh. new york so oh, wow. that's what that's what i remember i mean you were <laughs> wonderful in every scene but the, those are like the you know that's what i remember and deb you were always you you. Were, we had so much fun across the desk from each other Dead. That was our thing. We had the look where they'd walk in and we know that there was trouble brewing and we'd give each other, we can't really show it here, but we'd be, be over our shoulders going, uh-huh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. And our scene together, when when Pat, when Pat Bobby died and she's comforting me, that was a really lovely, lovely moment. I'm just crying my eyes out and not able to speak and she's just standing around and, and I felt like we always were connected. We weren't acting. I felt like the three of us were, and, and Cheryl too, were very connected yeah. and connected as friends and as people. And I always felt like I was supported um, by them. Yeah. Let's see if I can find another. Yeah, talk about. Um... Wait, I didn't get to answer that. Oh, yeah. Hold on, <laughs> Hold on here. We want to see. Yeah, let's hear from you, Deborah. Sonny Bernard's put in here. <laughs> Well, of course, my favorite scenes for myself were when Cliff Barnes was, you know, blackmailing me just just because that was super fun to get out of the office. And, you know, they're always throwing me in a bikini by the pool. And um, but uh, and then Larry was so sweet to me, like when when and he found out that I was the spy, you know, he was directing that episode. Mm -hmm. 
And he was so kind to me because, again, I was such a young actor and I wanted to do such a good job. And I was so nervous, of course. And he, you know, he talked to me. He took me aside. He gave me notes. He let me do it repeatedly, which in the world, these two know, in the world of television doesn't exist. You know, basically, if you hit your marks and you say your lines, it's moving on. You know, yeah. nobody, you know, this isn't like great yeah. art, you know, we're like, we got it, let's move on. And he let me do it several times because he knew what an important scene it was to yeah. me. And I, um, mm -hmm. I never forgot that. That was yeah. really, really important to me. Um, and my favorite scene with these two are just all those scenes where, where we're in the office, like we've just seen some of them where, where we really were a family. I mean, we felt that way, yeah. you know, we got there, we did our thing. We went out to lunch. We talked together. We really were living those roles, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. it felt like we were secretaries together. Yeah, absolutely. It was, um, it was the perfect part-time job, really. <laughs> it's really yeah. Fun. Yeah. It was like, um, I mean, I, uh -huh. I guess for me, anytime, I mean, there were a couple of scenes in particular where um, when I had just that time with, because it was so rare that I had those moments with Patrick, there was one where he had, you know, we'd become personal assistants. We had become, you know, welcome right. to that, welcome to the, you know, moving into the late 80s, 90s instead of secretaries. <laughs> um, yeah, and right, I have a wonderful right. scene where I'm encouraging him and, you know, really trying to build him up. And then any time where I felt like I... um was a part of, I mean, he shared with me in terms of like relationships or personal stuff that was going through, because it happened so rarely. He's, he was just, he, yeah, I'm talking like he's, he was so wonderful to work with and easy to work with. He, same yeah. thing with what Deb said. They, I never felt like I, I couldn't do it and I wasn't put at ease and that they wanted the best scene possible for us. We weren't throwaway characters. It's exactly right. right. And, Leonard, and Leonard did the same he thing. Sure Leonard did. When he yeah, directed, he was great. Remember how he would direct? He would like speak very softly. He'd come yeah. right up to you, and everything in his manner was reassuring. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all good, you mm -hmm. know. Let's just, you know, whatever. Try this or try mm -hmm. that, and he always made you feel like you were wonderful. Let's and let's just do it again or whatever, right. you know. So you never felt like <laughs> oh, God, I'm not doing pressure. a good job yeah. or you know the pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And it was great over the years seeing your characters and people like Harv Smithfield, uh, Rosanna Christensen, who right? also has yes. sadly passed. Uh, and Dora. <laughs> yep, Dora, Pat Colbert. Um, Pat. I always, as I mentioned earlier, I called the all your characters and the, the members of the cartel, and Fern Fitzgerald is going to be joining us in at the Hollywood show. Oh, great. That's uh, great. Uh, the threads of familiarity woven into the fabric of the Ewing Tapestry. That's you're kind of like the glue that just held everybody together. And, um, That's right. We were. We were always there. We were talk the, about we were the, the um, <laughs> we, we had we had Michael Priest on so at one oh, point and uh, he was a great director. He was very he was, he was. and he, he, he I remember him too. So. He yeah, talked about him. how there would be these times where they would go so off script that he would they would just come out with a, a blank script sometimes and just hand it to them and say, fill in your lines or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. um, you mentioned um, Leonard and obviously his daughter played Jackie. Yes. Yes. And the let's, secretary. Yeah. let's actually see if I can get this clip going here. This was a very interesting clip that introduced another interesting character here. There you go. Sly, there's someone here to see JR. He doesn't have anyone scheduled. Who is it? He wouldn't give his name. We explained that JR is out most of the day, but uh, he insisted on waiting. Well, where is he? He's in JR's office. <sighs> What's he doing in there? Oh, boy. JR's going to have a fit. Well, we tried to stop him, but uh, well, you'll see for yourself. Go on in. Check him out. Excuse me. Uh, what are you doing here? Well, actually, I was wondering what a sly love groom would look like. Oh, were you? Yeah. I thought it must take a very unusual woman to use that name. Look, then I looked around the office and I said, 
Now, what other kind of woman would be J.R. Ewing's assistant? The kind that doesn't think you belong in here. Well, I did want to speak with Mr. Ewing. Well, he's at a funeral, and I don't know when he'll be back. Well, I'll wait. It could be hours. Oh, that's fine. See, that'll give us a chance to talk. <laughs> well, I have work to do. But you're not going to leave me in here alone, are you? No. You're going to wait in the outer office. You know, I hope Mr. Ewing appreciates you safeguarding his office this way. Just what did you come to see him about? Well, I'd love to tell you a sly, but really, it's between him and me. Oh. Well, then, until he shows up, I think you better wait outside. Lead on. Sly? Yes? You've got a really nice walk. <sighs> no, I love that. I didn't even remember. What, is, what, what episode is that from? I want to get that. That was... Sunrise, sunset. Uh, oops, oops, yeah. oops, oops. In in what uh, what uh, which which year or season? Yeah. That yeah. is uh, season thirteen when they Jr. is at Tommy McKay's funeral. Oh, I don't have that. I'd love to get that. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just gonna jump back to uh, talk about Cheryl Lynn and Sasha Mitchell is actually going to be at this event too. Oh yeah, wow. and I know. Great. You both, uh, Deb Bernard and Danon, were involved with his character at one point. He was trying to get use us to get to Jr. Right? He's another yeah, one just of for us. information. He's doing that with me. Yeah. Well, you know what was funny is that the scene had he and I in bed, and so I went to Lenny and I said, "Lenny, my Girl Scouts watch this show." <laughs> So where are we going with this? You know, yeah. and my husband, Mark, had worked with Lenny on Petrocelli. And so they knew each other. And uh, so he said, oh, my gosh, Danon, you're just not the typical actress. And then so the next morning when I showed up to work, uh, Patrick was directing and I'm out, not in the bed. I'm on the, I'm um, standing by the phone in a full length robe. And it was the same robe that the young lady, Catherine, I think her name was, that was with, uh, had an affair and got married, I think, to Jarrett, JR for a period of time. It was a, the robe that she wore Kelly? in one of the scenes. Uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> it was so cute how protected they were because I was just like, uh-oh, uh -oh, my girls watch this show. What are you going to do with me in bed? I don't know about this. Well, um, network television in the 80s. Yeah, you couldn't it wasn't get that bad. I know. That it wasn't was too never, bad. That was especially. never an issue for me. Um, I was it a good girl. grew up after that. I was, you know. one, of the last, one of the last episodes when JR is, is at his lowest, he comes to my apartment and I end up sleeping with him. I know. And, this, and what was hilarious was Leonard's description to me for for how I should play the scenes. And think of yourself as Florence Nightingale. Uh, yeah. Yes, Lolita. Go. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. it's a, it, it was really funny. It was just yeah. like, you know, we kind of like got close. I don't even know if we, I guess we kissed or something. And it was cut to next morning, right. walking out in a robe, you know? So well, yeah. at, at least I you didn't end that. up like Tina Louise's character, Julie Gray. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> flying no. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. No. Um, I was the good girl. I never, no one ever used me for blackmail. <laughs> well, well then, which after, 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 after my scene with him, uh, Michelle came on board and I was so grateful that I had held up my hand and, and said, oh, I don't know about this because, wow, the scenes between, um, you know, JR's son and Michelle were quite racy. Quite fun. She was adorable. She was so cute. Which brings up... I think she's coming, too. Uh, uh, Kathy Podwell will be there. Oh, good. Yeah, Shelley Wilson her. is going to be there. Oh, great. No, nobody knows where Kimberly Foster is. Nobody has seen or heard from her since. Oh, really? Oh, that's who she was, was Kimberly Foster. Yeah. 
which brings up an interesting question. Could any of you have done the things for other bosses that other characters have done? Like, could Phyllis have done things that Sly did for JR? Could you have spied on people and done that sort of thing? And, you know, and I think you answered that question. Could you, could your character have done any of those? No, as a matter of fact, there's a, it's on my, it's on my demo reel. Um, there's a scene where, where Patrick, or, you know, where Bobby asks Phyllis to look into some information and she's kind of like, well, isn't that sort of the same thing as black? I mean, you're talking about blackmail and isn't that blackmail? And he has a cute little yeah. comment about, oh, I agree. Now get off your soapbox and, you know, but, but I was always, <laughs> don't I'm, do it. He was the conscience in a way, even though he probably wouldn't have done it, but, um, you know, I always compared myself to being the Della Street. I'm going to really, for people who aren't going to know this, Perry Mason had Della Street, who was oh, incredibly yeah. loyal, and she was sharp as a tack, and she was very, you know, protective, but she kind of also reminded him when things got started to get a little off track. So I don't know that I could like, have. Like, you couldn't have spied on Cliff Barnes uh, the way that... No, but I wouldn't have been put in that position, right. probably. Do, so you, do never... you know what I mean? Just by right. the nature of who we worked for and with these and, and how you worked and yeah. yeah and don't forget i was blackmailed by cliff barnes you were right because your brother yeah. was in jail because he wanted <laughs> I, to get to, he much yeah. more wanted to get to jr than he wanted to get to bobby you know right and, and because of the yes with, with Pam. Of their rivalry. So, yeah. yeah and you went out and obviously Deborah, you went out in the field uh i remember one episode in particular where jr was negotiating a deal at somebody's farm and i was trying to which episode that is or what season it is? It is in the season where JR is trying to get all the West Star stock when Kimberly uh Lee Taylor Young was on. Uh -huh. Because Cliff turned to pills because he was being held up by JR. I, I have to find the episode. I, I will send you if the you clip. find out, let me know. I would love yeah. to track that one down too. That was treasure trove. He he had he, You were drinking he, the, you were drinking the beer on the porch. I really did do one of her jazz. <laughs> I know. He asked me to dress up in a short skirt and a little tie tie and be like the farmer's daughter. I'm sitting there on this this fence with this little skimpy outfit trying to seduce this old farmer. It was ridiculous. And the milkmaid. I know. The milkmaid. It for the farmer's daughter. The, the name Sly was so perfect for all of that. And it, it was so and, and you can see when she started Miss Innocent and what she became, like she just developed into yeah. Sly. And it was, it was very, amazing. That was a very similar scene to one that was done before you came on where JR or it was it JR or Bobby, but they went to this guy Kessel's farm and Colleen Camp was playing Kristen and she yeah. had to act the same way, like the little innocent, like flirty girl and everything. And I, yeah. Every time I see those two scenes, they remind me of each other. But one other scene cracked me up. And you know what would make this rebel really happy? Is watching you wake up with a smile on your face tomorrow morning. Actually, I hate waking up with a smile on my face. In fact, I can't even put a smile on my face until I've had my first cup of coffee. In the office. I'd love to have oh. that one too. I don't have a copy of any of these scenes. Well, yeah, you down. Since these are to me, Josh, I would love to get absolutely, them. absolutely. And so, and what shows were those? Because the one scene I did with him too, I'm trying to remember. I was trying to find um, your scene with him, and I ran out of time. What year that was? It was eighty. No. Was it his first season on? It had to be his first. Yeah, it was eighty-five. Nineteen eighty-five was it? Anyway. I'll look that down, but um, yeah, it was funny. So, but if, if you three were going to write um, a book about Ewing Oil, what would you call it? The best mm. chapters of my life. No. As our characters writing a book about Ewing Oil, or as our as as actresses working on Dallas. All right, both. Let's try both. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking of your characters, but you, you, you bring up your. These walls could talk. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, the secretaries know all. Mm -hmm. Secretaries know all. Okay. <laughs> now, mm -hmm. towards the end of the series, it was uh, apparent that probably wasn't going to come back. And well, mm -hmm. that was that was a question. Remember mm -hmm. what happened was this: the last season ended, and you know, unfortunately, Lorimar or CBS—I guess it was really CBS. 
yeah. hadn't made a decision. Right. And so it was a question in the air. We went to our last rap party and we we're all looking and it was sad because we we're all looking yeah. at each other going, well, we don't know if this is goodbye or not, you know, because no. um, they hadn't given us a definitive answer. Right. There was a question as to whether it was going to get picked up, but it wasn't for sure. And it was really unfortunate because that mm -hmm. was the last time that we saw a lot of people. And yeah. we didn't, and we didn't know. And we yeah. found out, I think I told you in my the podcast. We were on Days did. of Our Lives at the time. I was on Days of Our Lives in the dressing room. And I get the phone call from Leonard saying we weren't picked up. And I was so sad that I didn't yeah. get that final goodbye with everybody. I don't know where you guys were. Mm -hmm. but we're yeah, we're worried too. I, I, I remember the uh, Lucky 13 is what they called our duffel bags. They put mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. a logo of Dallas and underneath right. it said Lucky 13. Right. That was yeah. the gift they gave away. Um, and uh, we all were very hopeful it was going to continue. Yeah. And we were yeah. so sad it ended. No, because it didn't oh. end. It didn't end in a way like, okay, we really know it's over and we're going to have that wrap party. But I'm going to, that's interesting you say that because I have my script signed. I do too. My the last, last show. My last episode. Yeah. And wow. I was opening, I opened it and I saw, see you next season, exclamation point, Luella Carraway, who was one of the secretary, Laura Mar's secretary. See you next season. Oh, so they didn't know. Nobody they didn't knew. know. They did not know. I remember. Uh, See, there was Barbara debate. Eden was on that show. Hmm. Hmm? How was How was Barbara Eden? Oh, she was great. Oh, she. It was so exciting meeting her. I have to say, she was one of my favorite. Um, you know, she's ninety two now. She yeah. goes to all these conventions. She still mm -hmm. looks amazing. She's, how does she do it? Yeah, I, I mean, she had. I'm sorry, she had a killer body. <laughs> Oh, she did. Yeah, yeah. She, was, she was like Dolly Parton, the two of them. Yeah, I just I don't know. know. I'm Beautiful. Serious. It was great to see her and Larry, you know, star. Yeah. And it's funny. Yeah. Larry, Larry, Larry went genius. from comedy to drama, and Patrick went from drama to comedy with Step by Step. Right. Right. Yeah, but don't don't forget, Larry brought so much comedy to his part in as J.R. Ewing. And that's, I think, what, what made it so unique mm -hmm. and so special and really what made us love to hate him. Yes, absolutely. You know? because as, Leonard, as Leonard described to me, which I didn't know when I first started on the show, and if you guys did, Dallas didn't start off as a story about the biggest villain in, in the oil business. Dallas mm -hmm. was a modern day Romeo and Juliet right. and between Bobby Let Ewing me. and, 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 and you know, Pamela Barnes. Barnes. And what happened was very quickly, you know, there the, the brother started doing so many interesting things that they just pivoted the story right. and it became yeah. about JR mm -hmm. and the oil was not just, you know, uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet. It was and very much was a, because he brought so much humor to right. it. And it was very much oh, family drama. It was, it, we, we, yeah. we, when dynasty came along, that's when the shoulder pads got big and the glamor and the hall that we kind of get got away from it a little bit because it really was family <laughs> drama. And right. with all yeah. the imaginations and the relationships in the family, because ultimately, right. even though it was sort of Cain and Abel, right? That was the whole thing. I mean, one of the right. episodes I did was Cain and Abel, but it was or right. the mark of Cain is that they loved each other, but they had different visions of for the company. And so that's why they were always at loggerheads. But ultimately, right. they were family. And a right. little bit of trivia is they were going to kill Patrick off after the fifth episode of the series. Really? really? And have it be about... Pam surviving within the family, but somebody said, "Why wouldn't she just take her settlement and go? <laughs> Why would she hang around there if if her husband was dead?" And they're like, well, right. Yeah, we can't kill him. She was never interested in the oil business. No. Right. Well, she she became interested because when she you know after he passed away, and she decided, and I think that was to keep an eye on the company, an eye more to foil Jr. Um, because of her relationship with Cliff, I mean, her brother, um, that, um, that um, you know, I had some really nice episodes with her because she was very much in the office every day. And that was unusual to have a woman in the oil business involved. And she Susan, wasn't Susan, Susan Howard it. stepped in right after Bobby was shot. She stepped into his office and that pissed JR off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of yeah. pissing JR off, um, you, towards the end of the series, there was a, uh, one of my favorite mm. scenes, and then I'll jump to JR Returns, and I think JR has crossed a line at certain points. JR? A lot of lines. 
Well, you're going to have to show Phyllis how things work around here. Better call her in. Okay. Might as well start now, I suppose. Huh. Phyllis? Oh, Phyllis? It looks like it's just you and me now. There's a whole bunch of things you're going to have to learn. I don't think so. What? I work for Bobby, JR, and only Bobby. Well, Bobby doesn't work for this company. Well, then I guess neither do I. What? JR, I've been waiting to tell you this for a long time. Hell would have to freeze over before I'd ever work for you. That was JR Returns, right? Yes. And that was. Yeah. That was, you, you both took getting to tell JR off. Finally, JR. Finally. I was going to well, say. I, I knew that. I knew I wouldn't be coming back because. <laughs> Yeah, I lived. I lived so over, but I lived. You quit. Yeah, I quit, and, but I lived to see the day, the next day. So. Denon was too nice to tell anybody off. It brings up an I interesting. Remember the point. what? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, it brings up an interesting point. I was going to say, was there anything that Jr. could do that would cross the line for Sly, and she couldn't do it? And we obviously saw that when he faked his death and uh, in the movie. That, that was it. <laughs> Finally, but you know. Finally. I, I, a lot of years putting up with every single thing he asked yep. me to do. Mm -hmm. I remember when I came back from, it, it had to be in 86 that season, because in 85 is when I had my daughter, right? And so I shoved, missed it. You shoved her under the desk, right? When you were filming? <laughs> yeah, and I did. I put her under the desk. And, uh, you know, like they'd come over and we can't have a baby on set. And I said, she won't make a word, I promise. She was so good, thank God. Oh, uh, as a matter of fact, in that group shot I showed you guys, um, she's in there with her best friend. They're just sitting there. Um, she's so yeah, but um, when I came back, I had a different desk. It was very small, and you guys weren't there. And I think Cheryl was there, and I was there, and I was so confused because I had missed a season, and it wasn't playing everything. And I didn't get the scripts because I wasn't on the show. I was in the hospital. I had to stay in the hospital for three months uh, when I was pregnant with her, two and a half months. Yeah, so yeah. I missed that yeah. that filming part. So I had no idea what had happened in that uh, period of time. And when I came back, you guys weren't there. Do you remember that? And then you came back, but I didn't know where anybody was. There was so many problems. I know there was a period of time I went off to shoot a movie. And I, I think we almost no, filmed there. Lionheart was after Dallas. Oh, okay. This was a ter this was a terrible movie. I never talk about, so I don't even want to give you the name because people might have to look it up. It was an awful, awful movie. But it was an opportunity, you know, yeah. you're a young actress to like go off yeah. and star in a movie. So me too. I remember going going to Leonard, and he was so kind. I said, you know, I got this movie. I don't know what to do. He said, he said, we are absolutely not going to stand in the way of your film career. You go off, you do your movie, we'll write you out, and when you're done, you come back, we'll write you back in. Mm -hmm. Who would oh, do that? I had the same thing in 85 when I went oh, to do it. Same thing in 85 when I went to do the movie. And, you know, we weren't tied to contracts. No. We got contracts per episode. We were no. never, you know, people say, well, you must have. No, we, were, we, we were recurring. We yeah. were recurring. I mean, we got better building than recurring, but that's what we were. And so we all did. I mean, I did tons of guest star stuff and we all were doing commercials yeah. and everything else. So it, it never, Who's you know, on Matt Houston? Really somebody was around. on Matt Houston. Pardon? I was. <laughs> you were on Matt Houston and the Dukes of Hazard. And the Dukes of Hazard and Three's Company and, um, Three's Company, Duke, yeah, Heart to Heart. And both Debs were on Law and Order, but decades apart. <laughs> yes. That was that was like, oh, I only did Law and Order like a year ago, right. yeah, two years ago. Yeah, was weird in say, say that, that that's been on that long. It's like The yeah. Simpsons has been on for 30, 35 years. Right. Mine was mine was with Jerry and Chris Noth in, in a boutique. Yeah. Mm. It was, it was, oh, my it, gosh. We've been going so long, my my computer's about to die. Okay. Are we? Shall, uh, shall I go get a plug to plug it in? <laughs> yeah, we'll, but we'll, we'll wrap up very quickly soon. Oh, hey, you don't want to go. <laughs> it's literally telling me it's going to go to sleep, so I'm oh, going to like go cut out in a second. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. So obviously, we're uh, is this the first time the three of you have at the same time since? Yes. Yes. Whoa, yes. wow. Yay, thank you, Josh. Yeah. Have you know, that, so so much, Josh, this we was so much fun. After the series, we used to try to get together once in a while, and then I was 
bi-coastal and moved to New York. And so I didn't get to LA very often. I was working, doing 50 shows over the past how many years. Right. So, and uh, coming, and then, coming up, I know the uh, you have an, two Debs in Pennsylvania coming up uh, next weekend. Happy Valley, February 24th and 25th, right? Right. And then we're all back yeah. together. We're all together and maybe we'll have a bite. Maybe we'll have a bite to eat, but we got to get a group photo while we're out there. Okay. Okay. We'll see Everyone you at the Hollywood there, show. Right. Everyone out there watching, uh, it's the Hollywood show, March 1st and 2nd at Burbank at the, the Marriott near the airport. And yeah. any final messages uh, before we wrap up for the fans? Just happy to have anybody come to see us. It'll, it'll be a it will be a thrill to meet a Dallas fan. They're always the nicest ones. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for caring about us all these years. Still getting fan mail once in a while, and it's just exactly. it's wonderful. Why and is the show so ladies, popular all these, these years? These two ladies are are some of the best things. Some of the best things that ever happened to me. Their friendship. So I'm really <laughs> grateful. And Josh, that's thanks to you for bringing us together. Well, yes, you, absolutely. Josh. Good times. Uh, I, I'm a Thank uniter, you. not a divider. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we appreciate that. All yeah. right, everyone, thanks for tuning in to this special episode of uh, the Ewing Barbecue Podcast, which is really a DOA, as Mary calls it, uh, not dead on arrival, but Daughters of the Alamo. She likes to refer to <laughs> anytime we have cast members on and we're talking about careers and just their experiences. And we've had Morgan Brittany, we've had Omri Katz, we've uh, uh, actually, Omri Katz talked about marijuana for an hour, but that's another story. Uh, <laughs> and you get to see all these people out there at the Hollywood show. And hopefully we can get a group photo or something with everybody in it. So yes. people can. Uh, and who are you who are you most looking forward to seeing out there? Or lastly, before we. I uh, think these two ladies for me. And then, of course, yeah. everyone. But and we have, you guys. We haven't mm -hmm. seen since we said yeah. goodbye. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I keep and passing Linda, Gray, Linda Gray Linda. is such a wonderful woman. Yep. Yeah. She is. And, and then, yeah, a lot of ladies that are coming. Yeah. Um, super excited. Everyone. It's going to be so much fun. It'll and be a we'll, reunion for sure. <laughs> we will see you all out there. And we okay. are lo looking forward to it. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll be back with regular episodes soon. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.